last part of the day so the first speaker is dr raja shanmuga krishnan consultant on plastic and breast surgeon ganga hospital india respected chairpersons professors and my dear friends the topic for me today is the pre -op, the pre op evaluation in aesthetic breast surgery and so i think it's a very important talk i think i would like to thank uh, gayan sir for giving me this uh, topic because i really thought about it and then i felt that uh, this is very important topic because in in uh, aesthetic surgery what really happens is you really prepare a patient and you prepare a patient it is more in preparing the mind of the patient so it, it is it is you can take the snippets out of this and you can do it for even colorectal surgery or thyroid surgery or whatever the principle is all remain the same and if you going to do the post op management and complications will be accepted if you tell them before the surgery and and so this reverberates with the theme of the conference that is the compassionate surgery so of course whenever you do a, a thing you need to have it in the right place and the right time so you have an appropriate privacy and it's very important for men especially when they talk to ladies they should have a lady chaperone and when you have a, a patient uh, coming in i think doctor anyone who has done mrcs will tell you first and foremost you must tell a good morning good evening or something like that and ask them their name what do they do and so on just to have a general talk i uh, just to calm down the nerves and then ask her what do you how can i help you and first and foremost what you need to do is that you just need to know is number one am i going to treat this patient or not i think that is very important just to give you an example i i still remember a lady that i had she was actually a very uh, she came along with the mother very sad not very happy and then she was like uh, she was like that and then then i stepped uh, kept kept on asking and then she wanted a breast augmentation and finally then she told that her actually her husband had left her and hence the mother wanted the lady to go have a breast augmentation thinking the husband would come back but then there are several reasons which men and women don't go and get along together and this is not the reason so this is a wrong expectation of surgery for her husband coming back is the end point for us making the breast bigger is the end point so these two don't match the goals are different the other thing is that for any elective surgery don't do any surgery for any patient that you do not like very important if you do not like it give it your uh give it your other consultant or give it to someone else now that you've had the patient you how are you going to take this patient out of your room so that is also very important so there are a lot of things that the people do know one they increase the price of the procedure so thinking that they won't afford it next to you know they will just walk off and nothing and all this not cannot be done and they walk off and then they argue about the feeling so for example i really had one patient who told that she wanted a breast reduction and then i saw she only had a b to c cup size breast then she really this needn't have a breast reduction at all and for her i can be telling no your breast is nice only your your breast is not uh, uh, big your breast is correct size so I, i can tell that or some people will keep talking about the procedure and complication around and around and around no so much so the patient will get confused and run away so that is also happens but none all these things should not happen so the best way to tell it is no so you see the patient and you find okay the size is uh, normal only and she is telling it is too big and because of that she is having back pain and then what you have to tell us first you have to acknowledge a problem i think probably i think it could be like that only first you have to acknowledge a problem when you when you acknowledge a problem what happens is they start listening to you i think that is very important yes probably it could be like that but then tell them that with the available options for her you won't be able to make a big difference between pre op and post op and then it should not be you know need not do it like that you do it or else what will happen is if you don't do this one they either get, if you are in private they write a bad review if you are in government they write a petition against you and you and we always be remember when these type of patients you have to be extra courteous to people whom you do not want to treat you have to be even more nicer to them even though you hate them that is important next is when the point is you know first you have to point point out whether there are some asymmetry in the breast i think that is very very important so maybe the studies even say there is 88 percentage of of breast are actually asymmetrical in normal population they found 88 percentage are asymmetrical so we only tell them the breast are actually sisters and not twins actually that is what we tell them actually 
because you know, they are very asymmetric so that is what you need to see or is what happens is you know sir this alone this breast alone looks different this breast after and different after operation they keep talking to you about that so very important the next is about the thoracic morphology so a lot of them have big pectus excavatum carinatum so to, to, uh, some have uh, scoliosis mild scoliosis some you will have some mild scoliosis and all these sort of things you need to see them and you need to note them note them down because of these things you may have some uh, problems and you may tell them that this is the problem rather than your breast actually and a lot of people actually come for ptosis of the breast so ptosis and you uh, any kind of uh, breast surgery you always have to look in the ptosis whether the degree of ptosis and uh, for, for mild amount of uh, ptosis augmentation will help but then if you want to have a lot of ptosis i think you need to do a mastopexy and that thing that is very important a lot of these patients actually come for breast augmentation but then they are not a uh, proper um, breast hypoplasia they are actually tuberous breast if you see the nipple area complex is very large and if you can see their infra mammary fold will be higher up so you need to know you need to diagnose it properly and for this the treatment is totally different so you need to know, see all these things well and even though you are only looking at increasing or decreasing the size of breast you still have to do the inspection and palpation properly and you always have to you know, palpate the breast and see for any lump because if you do have a lump and after surgery they going to uh, the lump may be even more noticeable especially after breast augmentation the lump will be even more noticeable and things will become very bad it will become very difficult to do a true cut biopsy and etc and etc so you need to be very careful so if you are going to have a lump make sure it is a it is a benign lesion and then only proceed any sir elective surgery you must always tell them where the scars will be i think that is very important you draw a diagram tell them this is this is where your scars will be i think this is very important even in a thyroid it's like that only and explain the complications and unfavorable results i think they are very important but it's all important on how well you tell it you must combine truth with uh, sympathy and empathy i think these are very important because when i was working abroad a lot of fellows used to be telling no there is a not point not not 1 to 2 percentage chance of death on table even for a small elective case you know they start like that and they keep on enumerating in uh, because anyway they are working in nhs and it doesn't matter actually so i think it, it, it's not like that you have to tell them the right way you should you should not frighten the patient away so you should divide it into most common complication uncommon but serious complication and rare complication so most common complication is for for example for after a breast reduction you can say they might have some wound adhesions and then uh, and then you may always when you say a complication you must always mention is how common is it and what will you do for it you would just say that we will just do some dressings and in 2 3 weeks will be fine you must always add that also and you must tell the uncommon but serious complication for example in terms of a a uh, breast augmentation the, the the implant you might have a uh, the implant may, may have to be removed away but it is very less or some very rare complication uh, in uh, breast augmentation like an implant rupture so you, all these things you have to tell them and the next thing is you always have to note whether they are right uh, wearing the right bra size most time most problem most of the ladies themselves don't know the, what is the right bra size and and that is a big problem so for example 34d means 34 is the chest circumference and d is the cup size so it is very important that you have the right bra size especially after a breast reduction surgery and all because an improper bra size can result in ptosis and poor post operative results and you must always in any plastic surgery or thing or even in any uh, field of uh, you must always take a proper photo against a standard background if you don't have a proper setup like this at least take one wall as your standard wall and this is the place where the the, the uh, all the patients will stand and the same place you will also stand and take a photograph same way same method so that you have a nice uh, pre op and post op so this for breast augmentations now there are various methods we use uh, external sizes and help to help us to know uh, what exactly the size they would like to do and now we having uh, 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 augment uh, um, uh, ai coming up and we using that we are also able to know exactly on how big they are and re- and you also have to understand what the patient wants for example for this lady she has had a mild uh, increase in size i think she is very happy and this is what she also uh, expected she is a 36 year old lady uh, after this she had a nice good mild increase in size and she is what she is happy 
there are some uh, the ladies who want this type of uh, breast augmentation as well for this girl if i'm going to give this breast she's not going to be happy and for uh, and vice versa but always and never promise that you will definitely give a 34 double d or something like that because what happens is that many times you push in an, an implant or something that you may not be able to close or if it's too tight then you will not be able to close never promise that i will give you exactly this i think this is all important now the regarding the measurements i think there are so many different different methods in which you use it i think as a young person who is into cosmetic surgery there are several ways to skin a cat i think especially in aesthetic breast surgery there are several ways of doing a breast augmentation and a reduction but what i would like to tell is that keep one thing as constant like for example to keep one of your one of the your mentor as the as the standard template and keep doing that again and again that mentor would have done it again and again and that's why he's having a good result just keep following what he does and finally you just uh, yeah, later on if necessary you can just uh, tamper it by a small amount always assess the, th the skin thickness in the upper pole in the breast augmentation because f you may have to put some fat injections in the upper pole or you may uh, go in for sub pectoral insertion now another important thing in uh, breast reduction surgery is i still remember a patient uh, after my training the my second patient after my training for a breast reduction and this is the same thing that all breast reduction ladies will tell doctor i hate my breast remove my breast remove my breast and every person will keep telling you the same thing because they because such a large breast they have so much of pain so much of difficulty in breathing so much of problems they said just remove my breast doctor how what size would you make make it just remove it doctor the same thing they'll keep on and on and then what i did was that i almost gave a, a b cup breast and and what happened was that uh, was, and uh, immediately after surgery she just saw a breast and then like doctor you removed my breast she asked and then my, actually i froze actually and then my my, my uh, trainee was along with me he also froze and he was seeing me he was seeing this sir what did she tell before and what is she doing now and from then on i kept the same thing whatever the size of the breast they will get a c cup breast and after that all women are happy next is about the gynecomastia i think this is a common thing which lot of you may, might be doing and the very important thing is you must emphasize to all these uh, people that they have to wear some good compression gar garments or something which is uh, which is uh, uh, compressing them because you are removing a good amount of, uh, of fat you are removing a good amount of gland and your the, the skin is over that in the top and and especially for great uh, cases you need to have good compression garments and you need to tell them beforehand itself that you need to wear this properly and uh, get them even before the operation only then they will have it and then they'll realize no okay i bought that uh, bought the compression garment at least now i have to wear it no get that before the operation and it's very important that you do it and pre operatively what i also do is that many times a lot of these guys actually expect a straight line after the operation but it will never become a straight line you you always have a pectoralis major and then you go on so i what i tell them is that you just keep the hands over your hips and then you press at least the pectoralis major comes out and then i just uh, hold it on and show them that only this is the extra part and so that is very important and similarly if you are going to have a lot of uh, fat in the in the sides in the chest you can do some liposuction for that as well to give a better result always tell after the operation it will look better but there could be asymmetry so i think it is very very important especially in gynecomastia because what happens is that uh, men are even more fussier than women actually and, the, and actually it is true because you know women don't go bare chested men become bare chested so it is very important that their incisions are good the gynecomastia operation is done very properly and nicely and it is not an operation to be given to the youngest fellow and then the most uh, it did not at, at the last of the procedure thing is a very simple operation it is actually a, a more difficult operation you have to do it properly and nicely because men are bare chested you cannot make them you cannot have a saucer shape deformity you cannot uh, have is you need to do it really well but always tell them that after the operation there could be some mild asymmetry because after that only they start looking at the mirror you no know, they keep on looking at the mirror and afterwards and so little like this little like this and they all they will tell so it is very important that you tell them that they need to do it properly and finally to conclude i think it is very important to speak to the patient and understand his uh, her well 
I think that is very, very important. We must explain the procedure, the complications, the stay duration, cost, and post-op management really well before surgery. I think you need to spend some time, at least around 20, 30 minutes before any of these uh, cosmetic breast surgery that needs to be done. And uh, most importantly, it is not important that how many cases you have done. It's how many cases you've done properly. And believe me, if in aesthetic breast surgery, if there's an unhappy patient, not only in aesthetic breast, in any aesthetic surgery, if you have an unhappy patient, but they really take your life out. And don't do any surgery for any patient whom you don't like or uncomfortable with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Raja, for your very informative uh, uh, presentation. And uh, on behalf of the College of Surgeons, uh, we would like to thank you for your presence and uh, your contribution uh, uh, for this, this session. Thank you. Next speaker is uh, Dr. Dulip Perra. He's a consultant plastic surgeon. Uh, uh, unfortunately, he's not here, but he has sent his uh, presentation. Uh, uh, and uh, we can watch the present his presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, may I take this opportunity to discuss the heading where we see some unwanted results, uh, which unexpected also, and then uh, how things, when things go wrong, what to do and uh, uh, to do some corrective procedures. Circumvariola excision. Now, I have put that in uh, inverted commas because these come from various other clinics and uh, probably not by any plastic surgeon. You would see how bizarre the excisions are. Uh, there is a way of uh, circumvariola reduction of breasts. And once, if one selects the patient, uh, you would get good results. But here, of course, you can see, other than the circum areola excision, the surgeon had tried to do a few short wedge excisions as well. And as a result, uh, more than the breast uh, deforming, you would see the nipple areola being stretched, overstretched, and few circum areola radial scars. This is once again a result that the client did not like. Uh, the appearance, especially when she lifts the arms in front of the mirror, and you would see that there is a befit appearance and uh, uh, the nipple areola being uh, not being circular. So this needed correction. This was not difficult. But then again, you would see that the results were quite acceptable at the end. I, would, I will show the results, but this is again uh, um, uh, another excision uh, by non-plastic surgeon. And then again, a circum areola excision where the nipple areola has been stretched to cover almost two thirds of the breast and you can see another scar bilaterally going towards the axilla where the surgeon had tried to take a wedge away from each breast. Again, to show how circumbarial excision can, uh, you know, distort the breast to circumbarial area, the pigment totally covering the breast, which is not the aesthetic result that we would want. So this is again a wedge excision showing uh, somebody had attempted um, after doing a circumbarial excision, which luckily healed, and then uh, uh, bilaterally taking uh, you know lateral wedges away, uh, which they, you know those surgeons have been probably told or shown somebody doing it. So this is what you see when the woman wears the bra. You can see excisions have been done from everywhere, more than the breast, also the side of the chest. This is again a, 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 a end result of a, of a uh, not a good uh, result, where the nipples are 
situated at uh, varying points and they are small, high, all that is happening. So, which I said, I refused to do anything further. She only wanted then a life suction, which I did. So the bifid breast again, to show you what I uh, did, I just drew it properly, taking all the standing measurements and uh, you would see the result soon. This is again uh, somebody's circumarial excision which really went wrong. One side is holding, other side is giving. So this woman, of course, the skin has been excised and um, I just skin grafted it and it heat and that is all the woman needed. This is again a, a, a breast where the, it is a common uh, error, common uh, occurrence where the breast can um, give way in the vertical sky area. The woman had the uh, intertrigo before surgery and that was overlooked and which resulted in uh, the vertical scar, uh, uh, you know, dehis decisions, which was uh, easily corrected. So let us see how unwanted results are uh, avoided. So this is again a plant coming in for heavy breasts and uh, tautic nipple. So we'll see how we get about the problem. So first of all, the markings. So these markings have been done, just the woman raises her hands to show a better view of the markings. They're generally taken when the woman is seated up and relax, arms by the side. So this is the end result of the same woman. And you would see that uh, reduction with uh, uh, the few things that we achieve in a breast reduction, where uh, the breast uh, gets a reduction and uh, uh, the ptosis of the nipple areola is corrected and you would get an aesthetically appealing rounded breast. So in the breast anatomical disposition, uh, you must realize that uh, all these 55%, 45% is absolutely correct. 55% uh, lie below the point of the nipple and 45% uh, is up in the upper pole area. So this is a large breast, heavy breast, and 49-year-old white woman. And where, you know, I wouldn't do a, a regular vertical reduction where a, a, a wise pattern reduction, if you know what I mean, was indicated. You know, those are the measurements. So this is at the end, first exposure of the uh, non-smoker this woman is, and uh, first exposure. So she was happy. I reduced about a kilo from each side and still the breasts are big, of course, swollen. So this is nipple areola after a proper healing period. Say this might have been about two months. So the nipple, you can, the breast, overall breast is nicely rounded, aesthetically uh, correct. And of course, in the dark skin, you get a scar, which uh, over a period of time settles down well, but it's, it's good, I would say. So this is again uh, the bifid breast that I was I showed you several times. Um, this after surgery, how the woman looks, the bifid nature has disappeared and uh, it has settled. Once again, that is the result. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, that conclude our session, afternoon session. It, question session is there. If you have any questions, you can ask. I don't know with two questions. Can I ask one question from Raja? Yes. Is uh, when you had third degree ptosis, 
with a gynecomastia patient, what sort of incision you make? Yes, sir. Even if you're going to have a third degree, third degree uh, uh, grade three uh, uh, gynecomastia, sir, still we do the same thing, and then we apply a compression garments, and actually you'll be very surprised that they they all uh, with good compression they really do well, sir. And if at all you need to do something, you can do it after around the six months. You will realize that you, what you really need to do will be very less. There are another group, a lot of uh, surgeons who say that you need to make a large incision in the, in the lower aspect and then uh, remove it. But I still feel that doing the standard of a format, making incision just around the, the areola and uh, one incision uh, in the lateral aspect of the chest and uh, do a liposuction, I think would all that is needed. And then wait for it to compress. It's bas basically, even a pregnant lady, ha after, uh, after some time, the, the, the skin actually goes back and almost is normal. So it will be fine, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any other questions? That's all, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Rajas. And thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, uh, let me uh, give a sort of a housekeeping message. Uh, it's the first time that the trainees are receiving trainers today, and uh, we hope that all you will join us uh, with a reception, uh, to the reception, uh, the trainees' reception. And um, it's happening outside. Uh, unwind yourself and enjoy the evening. Thank you so much.